So here's some quick tips on what to do with the recovery arm in swimming front crawl. You want to sweep in a semicircle motion, protect the shoulder joint, keep it nice and low. What you don't want to do is this, lifting the arm overhead, over the back of the head is potentially going to cause friction, balance issues, using unnecessary muscles and resistance as the arm comes slamming down. So avoid this at all costs. Keep the arm nice and low, open up the shoulder joint and it's going to protect it forever and keep you injury free. The other thing you don't want to do is go thumb in first i used to swim like this terrible internal rotation it's going to irritate the shoulder joint it's also going to get you swimming in the center line which is going to create balance issues and also zigzagging you want to work with the shoulders natural range and what i should mention at this point is if you want to learn the ocean walker technique in detail then you can learn it on ocean walker vimeo my online coaching series there's over three hours of footage i add a video every month and it shows you how to keep the head still how to pull on your side which is the most efficient you can possibly be how to do the foot flick to rotate from side to side so you're spiraling side to side to get the maximum glide possible saving energy length of stroke so if you want to swim further and faster then ocean walker Vimeo can really help you if you can't see me in person. Okay, back to the semicircle sweep. How do we do it? So once you've pulled to the groin, so you've maximized that power to the groin, because beyond the groin, you're going to push water upwards. And also you start using your triceps. So you don't want to do that. You want to pull to the groin to get that power because the way you go forward in swimming is pushing water back and pushing your body past the arm. If you go beyond the hip, your shoulder will tip forward, you'll push water up and you'll go straight down. So you're not going to go forward that way. And also it puts your shoulder in a vulnerable position and your arm is quite far back. So there's going to be a delay getting it back in. So we want to finish at the groin, pull to inside of your leg, then turn your wrist outwards to go round the semicircle. So it's like showing your wristwatch to the wall, sweeping that semicircle, opens up the shoulder, protects it from injury first of all. So if you've got any shoulder problems, this is going to protect it by turning the wrist outwards, which works within the shoulder's natural range. If you pull beyond the groin, like I say, you're going to push water up, put it in a vulnerable position. If you then drive your elbow upwards and go overhead, then you're going to put it in a vulnerable position as well. Biggest crate of injury is throwing your arm overhead and also a high catch. We don't do that in the ocean walk technique. We pull to the groin. And the reason that I can do this semicircle sweep is because I have natural elevation of the shoulder. So when I'm on my side pulling, the shoulder comes out the water, as you can see here. That means that I can do a low semicircle sweep. Now, it sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? You think you have to lift high overhead. But every inch you lift that you don't have to lift is going to be extra energy and irritate the shoulder joint. So if you see people with these nice high arms overhead, they're not nice at all. It's irritating potentially the shoulder because you're lifting overhead potentially compressing the shoulder joint. You've got seven tendons running over the shoulder. So by doing this semicircle sweep, keeping the elbow bent throughout, so it's like I've got a bore in the elbow, that gives me the nice entry position at that 45 degrees in order to go deep and downwards for the glide and for the catch. So you'll see here, I don't sweep where my arm goes straight on top. It enters with that bent elbow. That means that I've gone early entry, downwards at that 45 degrees it sends it deeper which means I glide downwards and then when I go and do the catch I'm in a deeper position which means the wrist is lower in order to pull water back rather than sweeping along with a straight arm it ends up higher the arm it means that I'm actually going more uphill so I'm gliding upwards rather than downwards it also means that my hand is likely to be higher than the forearm and elbow, which I don't want to do because then I'm ending up pushing water down unless I can go over the barrel or take my wrist over the top of the water, which is going to put my shoulder under pressure and my lats. Everything's going to elevate and you don't want to put your arm and shoulder in that position. So having that early entry sends it down to 45 degrees, sends the hand lower than the wrist, which means it's easier to pull water back. As I say, going to be gliding downwards and you won't feel any pressure when you do the catch. So once you finish pulling in the inside of the leg, don't send the arm straight on in a straight motion because you're going to get so uh, potentially nip up your traps. So elevate your traps. 
And by doing this relaxed sweep, is going to protect your shoulder. It's a natural movement. And that means there's going to be no pitching. It means that it's more effortless because you're giving your shoulder width. The more narrow you are, the more pinching can occur. And also, by lifting overhead, you're going to pinch as well. So we want to avoid this recovery arm being any pressure on the shoulder. It wants to be effortless. It wants to be protected. Because the only way you go forward in swimming is pulling water back. So if you lift, not only is it extra effort, it's just going to put your shoulder under pressure. And you don't want to do that. And then you're going to slam down on top of the water. Then your hand's going to be too high. Then your body's going to want to drop. And you're going to be pulling with your body sinking. So every inch your hip is down is drag and resistance. Every inch that it's high towards the surface is efficiency. And if you can do that on your side, then you're basically a third of the size. You're as efficient as you possibly can be. Someone who's tall like me, I've got a big frame. So if I'm swimming flat, I'm going to have a lot of drag and resistance. But if I can pull on my side, I'm going to be really small. So I'm going to have less drag. Again, you've probably heard me say it before. How do you make a boat faster? You make it long and lean. You don't make it small and wide. So this is really going to help you by protecting it. Semi-circle sweep. Keep the elbow bent. Get that early entry. Sending it down to 45 degrees. Making you glide more downwards and easier for the catch. So try this out. As I say, if you want to learn this in detail, you can come for a one-to-one lesson at the Ocean Walker Academy in UK Lincoln. Spend a few days with me. There's also swim camps. Or if you can't see me at all, there's Ocean Walker Vimeo, my official online coaching series where I take you through these steps in detail, below the water, as well as on top, as well as drills to practice to make everything easier. I hope that helps and all the best to you.